Kaya Warren is a rambunctious six-year-old. Mommy! Mommy! Mommy, may I get the cover to my bubbles, please? But his high energy and disruptive behavior weren't always easy for his mother to handle. <laughs> what? Okay, boys. Kyle, go run bath water, get in the tub. When he was around six months, Kyle would throw tantrums and repeatedly bang his head against the wall. He was in daycare and he banged his head so hard on the concrete floor he had to go to the hospital. I didn't expect parenting to be like that. I mean, I'd have anxiety attacks like crazy because I couldn't handle my child. So she took him to the pediatrician. And I asked him if there was something that we could do to help calm him down because I could not handle him. And he put him on the Risperdal. Risperdal is a powerful antipsychotic drug. It is often used to treat adults with paranoid schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. The drug is FDA approved for children as young as five, and doctors may prescribe it in unapproved situations. But Kyle was 18 months old. Before his mother knew it, Doctors had diagnosed the hyperactive toddler with autism, ADHD, and bipolar disorder, with each adding a different drug to Kyle's already crowded regimen. Nifolcaline, Cyprexid, Prozac, Clonidine, Hydroxyzine. Kyle's pediatrician told the New York Times, quote, Kyle was very aggressive and easily agitated, so you try to find medication that can make him more easily controlled. You can't reason with an 18-month-old. By the age of two, Kyle was on more than five different medications for his aggressive behavior problems. This is his third birthday picture. This is when he was on all the different medications. He gained a lot of weight from the medication. I mean, all I had was a medicated little boy. It's like you'd look into his eyes and you would just see just blankness. His shell was there, but he wasn't in there. And I didn't like that. Studies show that tens of thousands of preschoolers are being prescribed heavy medications to control tantrums and calm aggressive behavior. For doctors and the parents who come to them in desperation, <laughs> pills can be a simple solution to a complex problem. There's no way that a primary care physician can spend the time on a full mental health assessment or has the training to do a mental health assessment. They're not aware of non-pharmacological interventions. It's not fair to the child, it's not fair to the parent, it's not fair to the physician. Dr. Mary Margaret Gleason runs a rare and unique program for thousands of low-income preschoolers in Louisiana. It uses family counseling and other therapies to treat children at risk for mental health issues. The children that we see really are getting kicked out of preschool because of their behavior. Their parent can't keep a job because she's always called to the school. These aren't children who are just saying no because they can't get the candy in the supermarket. These are children whose behaviors really are impacting their life and their family's life. This state-funded program assigns each child a team of psychiatrists, social workers, and case managers at no cost. They may spend months addressing the underlying causes of their unruly behavior. Throw the, the chairs. Like they did for seven-year-old Jessica. And it was like I couldn't keep her under control. It was like she was a mad woman. I used to whip her. I'm not gonna lie, I used to whip her because I thought she was doing it to aggravate me. Until I realized, no, something else is wrong with her. A pediatrician put Jessica on Risperdal at the age of three. But with the help of Dr. Gleason's program, she was weaned off the drug after therapists discovered that her tantrums were caused by an unstable home life and developmental delays, not psychosis. Jessica, how old are you? How old are you? How old are you? Count mama's fingers. One, one, two, three, four, five. No, count on my game, girl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But Dr. Gleason's program is an intensive and time-consuming process for both child and parent. When Brandy Warren brought in Kyle for a videotaped session, the three-year-old was drooling and severely overweight. Things wasn't working with the psychiatrist because he was just putting him on too many medications and he was still completely uncontrollable. During these sessions, Dr. Gleason discovered that Kyle was neither autistic nor bipolar, but had severe speech delays for a three-year-old, which might explain his tantrums. Kyle had a few words, but 
essentially his communication was gestural and then his behavior responses. He could not say cat, he could not say dog, he could not say mama, he could not say daddy, brother, anything. I mean, a kid his age should have been talking. Kyle's speech delays were noted on his medical record, but his child psychiatrist, whose waiting room contains Lego toys branded with the name of an antipsychotic, prescribed drugs. This doctor declined to do an on-camera interview for this story, but he told a New York Times reporter, quote, it's not easy to prescribe this heavy medication, but when they come to me, I have no choice. I have to help this family, this mother. Their children are really acting psychotic. Dr. Gleason and her colleagues offer an alternative solution for desperate parents. But because of its expense, programs like hers are difficult to expand. Hey, Mama, proud of you for saying you're sorry? Yeah, I bet she is. That's sometimes hard. And even for parents like Elena LeBlanc, who have found help at therapy-centered psychiatric programs, it can be hard to manage their children without pills. When Jessica turned six and aged out of Dr. Gleason's program, her overwhelmed single mother ran out of therapy options and put Jessica back on drugs. That's a good, a good thing for somebody to have that has a child that, that they can't cope with. If they put them on that, it's gonna help them focus and relax. Give the mom a little break. You used to go to school or are you out? Uh-uh. In school. In school. If they ask me to take her off, I'm not taking her off. Because she's doing good now, I'm not messing it up. What this family needs and what traditional mental health services provide are different. They're a family for whom a pill is not the answer. Brandy Warren has certainly come around to that line of thinking. They don't need to really be putting all these kids so young on medication. Hey, look, I made a carrot. Yes, I did ask for it at first, but I was at my wit's end, and I didn't know what else to do. Look, some pickles and some grapes. But if I could go back and do it all over, I wouldn't put them on none of it. Since leaving the program, Kyle has blossomed without antipsychotic drugs. He is doing well in the first grade and now only takes one drug, Vyvanse, for his attention deficit disorder. My expectations for the next few years is no medication and just being a normal kid, having fun living life. 